Today on Hands-On Photography, I'm going to talk about why you need something like this little tube here to take a picture of this tiny little coin that I have. It's going to be fun. It's called macro photography. Stay tuned. Hands-On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands-On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. Trying to cool off just a little bit here in the home studio. It's a little bit warm, but we're going to be quite all right. I promise you. This is the podcast where I like to sit down and share with you different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer and a better post processor, regardless of the type of camera that you have. I don't care if you have a $6,000 fancy smancy DSLR or if you have a little $300 point and shoot or if you have an old smartphone such as something like the OnePlus Noid. Don't care. We're going to talk about photography, the concepts behind it, and the fundamentals. And quite frankly, it's never about the megapixels. It's always about the story. If this is your first time catching the show, I appreciate you doing me a favor and hitting that subscribe option in your favorite podcast app of choice. Whether it's Spotify or Apple Podcast or Google Play or what have you, we're on all of these platforms. But if you can't find us in those platforms, go to our website and it'll point you to the right direction. The website is twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash HOP for hands on photography. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with this week's show. Now, this week's show, we're going to do a bit of an introduction, if you will. We're going to talk about macro photography. So what is macro photography? Macro photography is when you take a subject matter and you take a close up shot of it, a very, very close photograph of it. That's in layman's terms. There's more to it, I promise you. But yeah, macro photography, you think about uh, a lot of photographs that you'll see on your favorite Instagram pages where people are taking inanimate objects, whether it's a flower or, or, or a grain of rice, a bubble on a, on a glass or something, and they get really, really close with their camera and they snap the photograph because it allows you to see some interesting little details. The trick is not every camera is going to allow you to get super duper close. Macro photography uh, requires you to have a, a little bit of interesting tech involved, whether it's a macro lens that you can get attached to your smartphone or whether it's an extension tube uh, like what I have over here. I have a couple extension tubes right here and I'll put some links here in the show notes uh, to take you on over to check those out just in case you're interested. But why do you need a particular uh, extra piece of kit if you want to do macro photography? Well, it's because of physics. When you're dealing with the, the uh, camera, I don't care what camera it is, you have a certain focal plane that your camera is going to work with. And if you try to put your camera too close to the subject, it's not going to focus. It's just not. I don't care what kind of camera it is. I don't care how much you paid for it. But if you put it too close to your subject, it's not going to focus. You have to back off a little bit. And sometimes that's not going to allow you to be able to get the extra details that you're wanting to get with your close up shot. So that's when you get those extra macro lenses that you can attach to your phone or attach to your uh, camera. Or like I said, you get the extension tube because what that's doing is particularly with the extension tube. It's allowing you to change your focal distance that your lens has in, con in relationship to the image sensor, whether it's your DSLR or mirrorless or your smartphone. The smartphone macro lenses tend to do a little bit more magnification, if you will, but depending on the type of glass that they use in these, these macro lenses, you're still going to be able to get a really, really crispy and sharp, high detailed image. Your mileage may vary depending on the type of um, attachment that you buy, because some of them are a little bit cheaper and you can tell when you go to shoot with those. But I wanted to show you a, a bit of a like a real world example regarding macro photography. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch here to my smartphone. Let's see. We can do it like this. And what I have here on my desk is 
just a 50 cent piece here in the US. And say I wanted to get really, really close and check the details of that coin. Now, as I move in close, the camera will start to lose its focus. And if you're using a smartphone, you'll even get a prompt like what you see on the screen. It says, hey, move back to improve the focus. Okay, so we can back up a little bit and we're getting, you know, it's a little bit sharper now. But I want to see more detail. I want to get really, really close to that. So I'm thinking, OK, well, I can just zoom in. And in some instances, a zoom in will work. But most of the time, if I zoom in really tight on this, uh, it looks OK. I could probably get a little more detail out of it if I actually use some sort of lens attachment and get an optical zoom instead of this digital zoom where I'm depending on the uh, uh, computer computational photography to do the work, you know, so that's something that you have to consider. Now, another part that's this, that's not necessarily discussed with macro photography that people tend to forget about is macro photography. Again, it deals with the relationship of the focal plane on your on your camera. So if you have an image, you're trying to get a magnification that is a one to one match or greater than one one to one match. So like a two to one. That way you're getting the image super duper close uh, on that uh, far as the relationship on the image sensor. Now, if I go back and take a look at this screen one more time for my camera, pop down like that. Now I'm looking, you're looking through the viewfinder, that quarter isn't filling up the full frame. You know, ideally when you start talking macro, you're talking where the subject is filling up the full frame like that. But you can't do that if it's too close. You have to back up. So you either end up doing a zoom or you end up putting an attachment on uh, something like this uh, extension tube that I talked about a second ago. But that's just something that you have to consider when you're doing macro photography. You figure out what your subject's going to be. You figure out how to get your actual focal length. Uh, focal length squared away and get everything in focus. And then all those other things that we talked about way back at the beginning of hands on photography, uh, we talked about setting your exposure, right? Getting the right shutter speed, getting the right aperture ISO. All of that is going to come in effect when it comes to dealing with macro photography, because if you're tight on your focus and zoomed in like that, uh, it's going to get really, really sensitive on your camera if things start to move or you start to move because it's real, it's, it's magnified, if you will. So you moving that just a smidge to the right, it's going to look really, really big in the scene. So you have to take all of that stuff into consideration. And we're going to talk more about this on a later episode. Today, I just wanted to do a little bit of an intro and get you folks ready for a lab because we're going to take something like this here extension tube and put it on a DSLR. Uh, you can put this on a full frame camera. You can put this on a APS-C crop sensor camera. You're going to get different results, but it's still going to allow you to get a different focal plane um, that you can uh, shoot your subjects with. It's going to be fun. Uh, trust me, I've been playing around with macro photography for quite a while, and it's a lot of fun. It's a big bit of a challenge at times, too, because, again, you're trying to get everything in focus and you're trying to get that subject to really pop and stand out and give you all of the extra little details that your normal naked eye would not see. If you're more interested in macro photography, I'd like to recommend you all give my friend, Mr. Dom Kamarechka, a shout. I'll put a link to his uh, profile here in the show notes, or you can just follow him over on Twitter. It's Don Com, all one word. It's D O N K O M for Don Kamarechka. He is an awesome macro photography and, and really allows you to dive into the science behind all of it. It's pretty good stuff. All right. So that's going to do it for us this week, folks. This, again, I just wanted to do a bit of an intro. We're going to dive into this a little bit more next week and get some hands on with it and doing some some photographs and some shots and just having some fun. I appreciate y'all joining me each and every Thursday here on the network. It's a lot of fun sharing these tips and ideas with you. Uh, again, make sure you're following the show. Uh, follow me on Twitter. I am Ant underscore Prude on Twitter. Also on Instagram and follow Twit over on Twitter. We are Twit, 
T-W-I-T on Twitter. And you get a lot of different posts and information regarding all of the shows here on our awesome network. And if you have any questions or comments or feedback, you can shoot me an email at hop at twit.tv. I've almost answered all of the emails that I've gotten. So I'm catching up slowly but surely. So go ahead and send over your image critiques and questions and feedback to hop at twit.tv. And I'll be more than happy to hear, hear from you and uh, get back with you as soon as I can. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you all for everything. Now, safely, safely create and dominate. Take care. Want more twit? Well, check out Smart Tech today. It's at twit.tv slash STT. It's the show where Matthew Casanelli and I cover everything there is to know about smart tech. It's automation. It's connected devices. It's smart home. It's all those goodies and so much more. We get the news. We get the latest devices. We do reviews. Everything. You got to check it out. Twit.tv slash STT for Smart Tech today.